Welcome to Mission to Mars. In this video, we will determine the trajectory of a spacecraft from Earth to Mars. We have been able to calculate orbits around Earth and orbits around Mars. The next task now is to plan an orbit from Earth to the Red Planet. We will do so using a method called the Hohmann maneuver. Geometrically, this method constructs an ellipse that is tangent to the orbits of Earth and Mars. This ellipse will provide a so-called transfer orbit. Along this orbit, a spacecraft may leave the orbit of Earth and then reach the orbit of Mars. The construction criterion of this transfer ellipse is that the departure and arrival points are on opposite ends of a straight line. Of course, for the space probe to rendezvous Mars after leaving Earth, the relative angular position of Mars with respect to Earth must equal the result we obtained in a previous video. This method provides an estimate of the needed mission time and initial angular speed. Such estimates will then inform the calculation of more accurate results. The mission time is the time a spacecraft takes to fly from Earth to Mars. The initial angular velocity is that velocity around the Sun that a spacecraft would need in order to leave Earth on a mission to Mars. In this method, the Hohmann transfer method, the orbits of Mars and Earth are considered to be circular, with radii R1 and R2 respectively, and only the Sun gravitational attraction is considered to simplify the analysis of the flight of a spacecraft from Earth to Mars. Along any orbit, the total mechanical energy and total angular momentum of a body flying in outer space are conserved. This was shown in a previous video. This conservation principle produces the following expressions for points 1 and 2 on the transfer orbit. The first expression is the conservation of total mechanical energy. R1 squared times omega 1 squared over 2 minus gm over R1 equals R2 squared omega 2 squared over 2 minus gm over R2. The second one is R1 squared times omega 1 equals R2 squared times omega 2. Point 1 is the departure point from Earth, and point 2 is the arrival point at Mars. Observe that these points are at the maximum and minimum distances from the Sun. This is helpful because in this manner the radial speed VR1 and the radial speed VR2 are both zero, which simplifies the analysis. In expression 1, the conservation of total mechanical energy, gm is the gravity parameter of the Sun. That equals 132,712,440,042 kilometers cubed per second squared. From expression 1, we then obtain the following results for the angular speeds omega 1 and omega 2. Omega 1 squared equals 2 gm over r1 cubed times r2 over r1 plus r2. And omega 2 squared equals 2 gm over r2 cubed times r1 over r1 plus r2. Omega-1 is the angular speed that a spacecraft would need to have to leave Earth and reach Mars. The corresponding linear speed is V1, which equals R1 times Omega-1. By the same token, Omega-2 is the angular speed of the spacecraft upon arrival at Mars. The corresponding linear speed equals V2, which in turn equals 
R2 times omega 2. Now, let RA denote the semi-major axis of the transfer orbit. It is defined as the average of R1 and R2. And so we may write that RA equals R1 plus R2 divided by 2. To calculate the period of time T12 taken by the spacecraft from position 1 to position 2, we use the following result from uh, orbital mechanics. And that is that uh, T from 1 to 2 squared equals pi squared times uh, Ra cubed over Gm. The non-dimensional version of this expression is the following one. T from 1 to 2 tilde equals pi squared times R A tilde cubed over this expression. Capital T squared over capital R cubed times GM. But this expression equals GM tilde. And so the final result for the non-dimensional T from 1 to 2 tilde will equal pi squared times R A tilde cubed over GM tilde. Let's calculate the numerical values of these quantities. For Earth and Mars, we have the following data. R1 equals 149,604,783 kilometers. VE1 equals 29,78 kilometers per second. And this VE1 is the velocity of Earth at position 1. R2 equals 227,952,390 kilometers, and VM2 equals 24,13 kilometers per second, where VM2 signifies the velocity of Mars at position 2. From these data, we calculate the semi-major axis Ra, which equals 188,778,587 kilometers. From the previous expressions, too, we find the following results. Omega 1 equals 1,155, etc., degrees per day, which corresponds to 2,187, etc., times 10 to the negative 7 radians per second. And for omega 2, we find omega 2 equals 0, 0,4975, etc., degrees per day. And that corresponds to 9,422, etc., times 10 to the negative 8 radians per second. The corresponding velocities are the following ones. V1 equals R1 times omega 1, that equals 32,728, etc., kilometers per second. This is the velocity to escape Earth's gravity. V2 is obtained as R2 times omega 2, that equals 21,479, etc., kilometers per second. This is the velocity of the spacecraft upon arrival in the vicinity of Mars. We observe that V1 is greater than VE1, and V2 is less than VM2. Therefore, as desired, the spacecraft flies away from point one. It flies away from Earth and flies toward Mars as it approaches position two. Finally, the time that uh, the spacecraft will take to fly from position one in proximity of Earth to position two in proximity of Mars is calculated to be equal to 258,88 etc. days. That corresponds to 0, 0,7987, etc. Earth years, which corresponds to 8,505 Earth months. This is the time 
that a spacecraft will take to travel from Earth to Mars on a Hohmann transfer orbit. And we observe that this time covers several months because the flight is unpowered. In the next video, we will use these results to calculate the flight of a spacecraft from Earth to Mars on the Hohmann transfer orbit. Thank you very much and goodbye. Dankeschön und auf Wiedersehen.